the theme of the record gives a dark impression. Why? Well, um, I've always been attracted to uh, dark stuff, so it can be art and art in general, let's say, and um, so music, paintings, um, sculpture, um, everything related to death and um, macabre kind of art and goth stuff, and uh, yeah, so um, that was uh, obvious for me to. Um, to, to, to that, that, that was just a reflection of myself through my music and uh, so since this album is a solo record um, it was just natural for me to, to do such thing. How did that title come to mind? Because a company um, is something that uh, is generally used for um, describing something about magic and um, um, I wanted to, just to give a bit of fantasy uh, in it uh, with the title something that um, could relate to um, yeah um, black magic and stuff just for the the, the, the image and um, yeah. How long was the writing process? <clears throat> um, actually, the first song I did in nineteen ninety nine was Prophecy of Loki, uh, which is why uh, now the, the the this version of the album is called um, Prophecy of Loki uh, twenty one because of the century because. 1999 it was a different century actually and um, so apart from this song I've, I've started working on it um, like in 2009 just right after the, um, the release of Archangels in Black the, the latest Adagio album Adagio's latest album Okay, what made you decide to invite all those players and how did you select them? Um, most of them are my friends uh, and I respect them a lot um, because of that musical um, quality and uh, because I really enjoy their playing and and so um, yeah, Matthias for example, I've, I've known him for like more than uh, 10 years um, he's a really unique kind of guy, uh, he, he definitely has a style of his own and um, so yeah, I just took this opportunity to, to have my friends sharing a few bars with me and since it was not possible to do it with the Adagio, uh, I just took the opportunity to do it with them. So, um, yeah, these are people I respect and um, people I like. Was there much direction given to the guest players? No, uh, no direction at all because I, the, the purpose of it was just to uh, have them um, play whatever they had in mind, what the music inspired them. So, um, no, no direction. I just told them uh, do something unusual, just do whatever you feel and uh, have fun. Was it an easy process working with the guests? Yeah, indeed. The, the only thing is that uh, they are all busy, so um, it's not that easy to um, to add the tracks uh, right on time before the mastering and, and the mix. So um, apart from that, yeah, it was pretty cool. Some of them were faster than some others, but uh, that was cool. Uh, we never like to pick favorites, so let me ask which stands out the most for you out of the songs on Shadows? It depends on many things. Uh, for example, I really like the Press Tickets Diamond because uh, it's a song I wrote for um, Jason Baker. So um, I, I really wanted to, to do something um, do something in the vein of what he did with Cacophony and with Solo Record when he was younger. and. Uh, and so yeah, this one means a lot to me, and also the um, improvisation on the Beethoven Sonata uh, at the end. It's a very really different song, but um, I really wanted to, to seize the moment, and um, so I just recorded it in one take. Um, I had the, the, the piece in the background and just played over it, and uh, just uh, shut down the light and uh, went into my stuff. And, uh, yeah, so this one is, uh, is uh, probably the most personal uh, thing I've, rec I've ever recorded. When you prepared to track, hmm? did you go through all of the guitar tracks at once, then work the drums around the rough guitars? Not really, I, I have just recorded rough guitars of uh, rough drums. <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, everything was rough in the beginning and then once the, um, the writing was uh, pretty much done, um, I just we recorded everything um, cleanly. Aside from the lag custom, what other guitars were used during the recording? Just the lag custom. 
I just used my uh, signature guitar. Did you use the Line 6 stuff direct for all of the recording? Um, a lot of it, yes. Um, what I mean is I've used Podfound 2 um, a lot as a plugin. And um, I was recording the, the clean signal and just had the Line 6 uh, for monitoring. And um, then we did reamping uh, for the rhythm tracks. We used the Line 6 stuff for some songs. For some others, we used the, um, the rectifier for the rhythm tracks. And for some others, we mixed uh, the amps. And uh, for the lead sound, um, yeah, um, I've used uh, most of the effects from the Line 6 gear. And, um, and some stuff I've reamped with the, the Mark V. So uh, yeah, let's say it's a mix. Stefan, you read and write music. Did you write all of the parts for this project? Most of them, but um, there is also a lot of improvisation. What I'm doing in general is I just play over the, the, the track and just keeping the, the best ideas. And then I'm practicing them in order to make them more fluid and um, to have something uh, more coherent. And um, So I'm writing some stuff down, but most of it is improvised. Is improvised. Who were your earliest musical influences? Well, I'd say the major one and the, the, the earliest one was my machine. Um, I literally felt in love with the, um, fell in love, sorry, with the, um, the kind of mix between classical and rock guitar. And um, that definitely um, made me want to do this. Um, to, to practice a lot my guitar and then Jason Baker um, also had the same impact a few years later and um, so yeah I'd say Ingrid Malmsteen, Jason Baker, Marty Friedman, Paul Gilbert. What was the first guitar solo that you learned? Beginning till the end it was um, You Don't Remember from Malmsteen, You Don't Remember I'll Never Forget from the album Tribute. Do you still have your first guitar and what is it? My first guitar is a little classical guitar and um, I still have it, but I gave it to my uh, to my nephew. So um, so yeah, in a way, I still have it, but uh, not home. Uh, Stefan, please talk to us about your custom lag, the concept of the finished product in details. Then, could you give us a tour of your gear? Um, what else? So it's seven string, twenty seven frets. Uh, I'm tuned down to A. Um, the Floyd Rose is uh, an original Floyd Rose. Yeah, um, <coughs> the um, pickup selector is in circle because uh, I just wanted to have um, a big freedom of movement when I'm changing my um, my pickups because I'm using, for example, for some techniques like sweeping and and um, yeah, and even some legato and tapping. I'm using the the neck pickup and for alternate picking too, and for other uh, licks in tapping and legato, I'm using the bridge pickup and. Um, I'm rechanging them quite often because in the solos I'm doing I'm mixing a lot of techniques and so um, yeah so I don't have big moves to do I'm just keeping my right hand the way it is when I'm playing um, when I'm playing and just have to to move so um, yeah the volume knob is uh, right under my um, fourth finger which um, makes it also very easy everything is at hand here and the pickups are um, custom pickups Dimaldio made just for me and for this guitar. Um, it's basically um, Thompson 7. Uh, we just changed the, the mid frequencies a bit uh, for the bridge pickup and for the neck one it's a blaze too. And we did the opposite, we just cut down the, 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 the mid frequencies for this one. We scooped a bit the, the frequencies. And so the rest of my gear, line 6 for the, for the amps and sound cards and um, and wireless system. I got a really um, a relay uh, J30 um, for for live uh, gigs. Um, I have a pod um, HG500. Also, that I'm using when uh, we are traveling, and I kind of bring all my gear. I'm just taking this. Uh, all my sounds are in right there, and uh, it's really uh, useful. And the sound is really great. You can just plug it straight into the PA, and the sound is awesome. Um, then when I can take 
all my gear for some um, solo gigs or when we are aligning. Um, I'm having a dual rectifier head from Mesa Boogie uh, for the Rium tracks. I'm boosting it with the Nylonez TS9. And for the lead parts, I'm using um, the Mark V, also from Mesa Boogie. And I'm uh, boosting it with the MXR pedal um, for the lead sound. The cabinets are uh, Mesa Boogie also, uh, rectifier cabs. Um, and then, yeah, for, for the FX units, I'm mostly using my Line 6. Mesa Boogie, Lag for the guitars, Dimaldio for the pickups and, um, and accessories like um, straps and stuff. Um, Elixir for the strings and Dunlop for the guitar picks. Uh, the gauge I'm using for the strings is uh, 946 and 56 or 58 if I can find some um, for the, the, the lobby string. And um, yeah, that's it. So thanks a lot to the readers of uh, loudguitar.com. I hope you're enjoying my album and uh, looking forward to seeing you soon, guys, in Canada. <laughs>